All right, another quick little video here. Um, something I want to address, and that is, uh, should we update the Bible to our modern times? I'll get this thing a lot, too. I hear people say, well, you know, it might have been that way in the Bible times, but it's not that way anymore. Kind of implying that uh, if God wrote it in the past, well, he really didn't know what was going to happen in the future, so he would change his mind if he was around right now. Let me read you a little verse here in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, this King James Bible teaches a lot of very controversial things, which our modern world finds to be very distasteful. And you say, well, then uh, maybe we ought to change it. No. You say, well, then we're going to change the world to go back to this. No. What should we do? Preach the book just as it is. That's what we should do. You know, some of you wrote in the comments, uh, saw one person, they said, what would you do if a saved Iroquois Indian came up and said, get out of my country? Would you go back to Germany? Uh, well, if they were saved, I would just simply say to them, well, uh, brother, sister, whoever it is there, um, I think you know the situation right now. Uh, not really possible for me to go back to Germany. You say, well, then it's okay for you to be integrated here into America, uh, living outside of the bounds of your habitation. No, I didn't say that either. You see, I preach Bible standards. And when the Bible says certain things, I have to preach that standard and not what's going on in our modern world. You say, well, then you're a hypocrite. No, I'm in a situation that I can't change. All right? If things were different in our world, yes, I would be in Germany. But if I go back to Germany right now, I'm going to have to do an about face, even if I could get out of the country, which is doubtful, you know, especially with the money situation that I'm in, but, you know, certain income that I have. But even if I could go over to Germany, I'm going to have to do an about face and come right back here to this area because Germany is over flooded with Arabs. So I can't, they're, you know, getting messed up over there. So how can I go over there and live, you know? And, you know, people say, well, America, like it or leave it. Well, I'm going to leave it. You say, when? When I hear my name and come up hither. Then I'm leaving. Then I won't have to worry about it. And again, I see this thing. People will say, you know, you teach kindred purity. Uh, well, what do you do about me? I have four different ancestors. I'm French, Hungarian, English, and Spanish or something like this. What about me? Uh, well, I'm not going to change the Bible to suit you. Again, I have to preach what the Bible says. And I do believe that the Bible is against interracial marriage. You say, prove it in the New Testament. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. God set bounds of their habitation. It's right there. It's just as plain as the nose on your face. Unless you're not willing to look at your nose, you know. But uh, there's a lot of standards in Scripture. The King James Bible never condemns slavery. You say, well, that's not very popular. I know, but we can't change the Bible to fit our modern preconceived notions and things like that. You know, are you a Bible believer? Really, are you a Bible believer? You see? We cannot update the Bible simply because our world is so corrupt and so perverted. I mean, we are stuck here, and right now, uh, as it's been well said, I know uh, Dr. Ruckman has a book, not seeing it right now, but it's called um, The Last Grenade, no, it's not The Last, Last Grenade, uh, Ruckman's Battlefield Notes. And he describes a military um, tactic of warfare called a rear guard action. Rear guard action is simply you're overrun, uh, the enemy is closing in, and all you're trying to do is slow down the enemy so that most of your troops can escape. Um, that's what we're doing right now as the body of Christ. Uh, we're not going to take this country back. We're not going to have massive revival and whatever else. Um, all we're trying to do is get people saved, uh, get the body of Christ finished up so we can leave. Uh, that's what we're doing. But uh, don't fall for the temp temptation to change what God's Word says because our modern world has changed. Um, remember, God's wrath is about ready to be poured out on this world after we leave. And yes, it begins at the beginning when he unleashes the Antichrist too, by the way. So don't give me that nonsense that it's halfway through or at the very end or some kind of thing like that. Um, God is very angry with this world right now. So don't say, well, you know, we have to make the Bible fit our modern world. It doesn't fit our modern world. And yes, and I do believe that you can, at least in some ways, as much as you can, 
live by this book. I do believe that. If you're such, stuck in a situation, you had four different kindreds of parents, well, there's nothing you can do about that. Uh, you just kind of trust God. You say, well, I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I'm glad you're no respecter of persons. But don't go out and promote integration because you're the product of integration. Don't go out and do that. Say, well, you know, there was some problems there with my parents, um, but I can show you what the Bible says. See? I'm not going to say, you know, I can't go back to Germany right now. Germany's being destroyed as we speak. You know, Angela Merkel is getting a, you know, she's Times Person of the Year. I mean, it's just disgusting. It's being destroyed. I can't go back to Germany. But I'm not going to teach that people should integrate. You see? You see what I'm saying? Stand by the Bible. You will be judged according to this book. Jesus said about the words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So you stand by the Bible no matter what.